I'm Brad Dacus, attorney and president of the Pacific Justice Institute. I'm first very sorry that I'm, I'm not able to be here uh, at this time with you at this event, uh, but my heart really goes out uh, to, to uh, the issue of dealing with Common Core and, uh, and specifically all the work that Orlean has put in to helping to educate so many people around the country uh, to be aware of the, the egregious uh, issues, atrocities, and violations of fundamental rights and liberties uh, that are taking place through Common Core. Uh, I'm not going to talk about all the details about Common Core. Uh, you've got a lot of other, spe other speakers talking about that and addressing what it's doing, uh, why it's not in the best interest uh, for, for education of our children. But I do want to talk about a few points from a legal perspective. Uh, first off, this is, as you know, is, is a top-down approach from the federal uh, all the way down to the states and the local government. And uh, there's a number of reasons why this is a major concern. Uh, first, of course, is the Tenth Amendment of the, of the Constitution of the United States. Uh, this amendment is, is very basic, but it's very fundamental in understanding that we as in the United States have a Constitution, uh, unlike the Constitution in other countries like France, where it says the federal government can do whatever they want unless the Constitution says they can't. Our Constitution is different. Our Constitution says that the federal government can only do what the Constitution explicitly says it can do, and if it doesn't, everything else is left to the states and to local, local communities and local governments and, and individuals. That's what our Constitution says, and it specifically makes it very clear in the, in, in the Tenth Amendment. Now, uh, unfortunately, uh, many often don't understand that education has historically not been a a major function or a regular function of the federal government. And in fact, in nowhere is that power explicitly stated or recognized in the Constitution. So on the face of it, uh, we see this overt overreaching of the federal, by the federal government as a Tenth Amendment violation. Uh, in addition, though, we also see this uh, as being a, a right to privacy violation. And, he and here's how. You see, it was a part of Common Core uh, there is a, is, a, is a major effort in its final implementation to be involved in collecting data, uh, biometric data, uh, as well as just statistical information, prying into the family uh, privacy, uh, for example, uh, asking questions about the family's religion, uh, their politics, their viewpoint, per perhaps on uh, different issues, different lifestyles. This is an egregious violation of privacy, uh, and the privacy specifically protected by the Fourth Amendment of the United States Constitution. And that's why I think it's very important that, that this privacy issue be addressed and be addressed uh, responsibly. We at the Pacific Justice Institute see this as an issue coming up and coming into play in the future uh, in the form of litigation. And so what we've done to help prepare parents uh, to be able to protect their, their children, protect their families with, with regard to this egregious privacy violations uh, is something it's, it's called our Notice of Reasonable Expectation of Privacy. It's something that we at Pacific Justice have prepared uh, for parents all throughout the United States, but particularly for those in California. In fact, we have two versions. Uh, one is just for those in California, where we also address some other privacy issues, such as the new law, AB 1266, which allows uh, teenage boys to uh, say they feel like a girl and go into girls' bathrooms, girls' locker rooms, girls' showers, at the same time that girls are changing and are naked and going into the showers. Um, we're addressing that uh, on the California Notice of Reasonable Expectation of Privacy. Uh, but in, in specifically, though, we're also um, having a broader uh, version of that for everyone in the United States, for all parents to use, uh, which helps protect them regarding invasions of privacy uh, and with regards to Common Core. So whether they're in California using the one that covers some other issues like AB 1266 or whether they're outside of California, uh, we strongly encourage them to go to our website, which is pacificjustice.org, pacificjustice.org, where they can get this information, they can download it, parents uh, check the boxes, they sign it, and then they provide it to the school's uh, teacher or, and the school's principals and put them on notice. And this is very important because this removes the likelihood of them being able to lay claim to a qualified immunity uh, with regards to these privacy violations. So it's very important. It's not just a symbolic act. It's a very substantive act with uh, significant legal significance in protecting the privacy of the children and the family. And so that's something parents can do and should do. Uh, now, there's also, of course, there's three different federal laws uh, we're looking at here. 
that limit the actions of the federal government, and we believe that those are being violated. Now, what about challenging it in the courts? Uh, how's that to, to take place, okay? Well, with regard to privacy, we have to see it implemented, and we have to then actually have a cause of action. To have a cause of action, we have to have uh, an actual victim, okay? But uh, with regards to these, these federal statutes, we're dealing with the same thing. You have to have standing, and you have to be able to have a, an actual um, case that involves that, that provides a standing. Uh, there is one entity right now that is deliberating the possible litigation to challenge this uh, uh, common core on a number of grounds, uh, and that is the uh, Orange County Board of Education. They've already debated it once. They had their legal counsel reviewing uh, the viability and possibility of them challenging this. We at the Pacific Justice Institute have already weighed in and, and offered our assistance and even uh, representation as, as needed. But we're also involved in challenging it in another facet, and that is in the state of Kansas. You see there, uh, the state of Kansas is adopting the Common Core version as applied to science, specifically the overtly atheist uh, aspects of their science curriculum as applied to evolution. Now, we've all heard about evolution and how it sometimes is implicitly uh, anti-creation or anti-God. This goes over the top. This is outrageously uh, atheistic uh, and explicitly uh, atheistic. And then because of that, and its reliance on what's called um, materialism, or being materialistic in its, in its, its approach, uh, we believe we have an excellent shot at challenging it. We have an affiliate attorney there in Kansas that's already working with us uh, to prepare to file in, uh, such, a, such a lawsuit and to challenge it in terms of its, its, uh, this, this historical, the history application of the Common Core umbrella. Right now, most states are just looking at it from a, a, a mathematics and a, uh, an English perspective or a literature, literary perspective. Uh, but we know that this is coming down in other states as well, so we're trying to hit it off of the pass there in the state of Kansas. Bottom line, there's many issues and many things we can be talking about. I know that some of the speakers will be uh, talking about other points of this. The bottom line, though, is simply this. Remember, uh, we have our Constitution, we have our rights, and we have our freedoms. Let us choose not to lose these rights and freedoms through complacency and apathy. I am pleased and honored to have the opportunity to address a group such as yours, where I know apathy and complacency is definitely not in the room. Thank you very much for all you're doing. Continue the good fight. God bless, and thanks again.